Can we stop being so negative, man? No, we have to. We have to. Embrace all these great oh, players. I'm First thing you say is the other team's playing better. Or the, they're not playing as good, or the extra competitions, or the coaches aren't good. He should have been within a Serie A team, within a top team in Serie A for what he did with Sassuolo. So Juventus has got a lot of pressure. You, you sound right. like you have a late night DJ voice right now for some reason. Mm. The, the, way way you're, <laughs> the way you're speaking, it's, it's like was, very soothing voice. How do you want me to talk? No, no, it's, it's just different. Sounds different than your regular what kind voice. Of excuse you have. <laughs> At least that was a Samuel. Just spot. ask him out already, bro. <laughs> Do you like this voice? Actually. <laughs> okay, that's oh, what's going on. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? I can compliment yeah, this voice. Yeah. It's fine. It's guys. I had a lot of it's dinner dances. Nick, actually, you, Nick, can you make... cut this? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Nick, can we you had, cut We this? had a lot of dinner dances had, this oh, week. Yeah, didn't dance I had so three. I had three, two, I had three in the roller club. The Viareggio team. And then for the Brooklyn Italians, we had Marco Messina, when Man of the Year, nominated Man of the Year, and won. He won it. He beat out everybody else. You mm. didn't even win. <laughs> but more importantly, not on the contest. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you, you should cut three of this thing. More important than that is we got on the dance floor, and oh. you guys know we love our dancing. And Peter Curto, with a smile on his face, lifted Antonio into the air, and then we carried on throwing Antonio up and down, that was nearly nasty. killing you many people like a, around. That like was a nasty. Pizza. You were like a pizza. Just but flinging but it if you there. check the picture, <laughs> Peter's just smiling like like nothing. We should post it. We should I'll post. I allow you to post my picture. You on IFTV Antonio. How am I gonna post it? I don't That's even have Instagram. Man. I don't believe you. What do you mean? There's IFTV Antonio. I know, but I don't have Instagram. This one's cool. Wait, Maybe some, somebody's faking to yeah, be you. Some, some, <laughs> It's a Greek that is that is manipulating my account. <laughs> Yo, the producer is laughing over there, dude. Are, are we starting next? Yeah, we ah, started. So, start, Mike, why don't start. you do the introduction Yo, since you look so depressed? Boy, I'm not depressed. Oh I'm just, you know, Milan didn't get the three points, so I was I wasn't feeling my best. Mm. You were going for Selene Dana, Paisa. I was just messing around with Anto. I don't really mean that, you know? Yeah. Is there tension so, between Mike and no, Anto right now? No, no, we're best buddies, right? I'm telling you, I'm very happy for that one point. I'm yeah. serious. All right, I wasn't talking about the Milan game. Let me ask a serious question. Yeah. Who's the problem in Bijan? <laughs> It's Who this, is the problem? Is this guy here and Mr. Producer that is not on the camera right now? Nick, can you zoom in on this guy here? No, on, he on the producer? On no, the producer? He can't, he can't hey, producer, on. come over here. <laughs> Anto. No. You can't. You're, you're crazy. Too much. All right. So wait, the producer, the, did the producer play with you? Yeah. No, he played with me, and he, he wasn't played a problem. against you. So yeah, he should no, be a problem. When he plays with me, it's a problem. Oh yeah. yeah. Always, always to blame. He mm. tries to blame it on me. All mm. the all, all of his mistakes. He can score mm. for crap. <laughs> Does anyone want second place in Serie A? Uh, no. Actually, Inter, I guess. Right. Well, they're not, not winning really. games. It doesn't matter. Everyone dropped points this weekend, except Napoli and Juventus. Listen, in terms of the big top teams. Maybe Juventus won second place. Maybe they won it. points back, right? We didn't get killed today because we will have lost the game against Salernitana. You know, oh, that is, come on. Don't start with that. There is a song that says, that. What does he kill him make you stronger? <laughs> na, 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 na. Who sings that song? Recording this? Who sings that song? What doesn't kill you make you stronger? Stronger. Na, 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 did you pay? Oh, look, 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 Nick is laughing. Anyway, we didn't lose, Pete. It would have gone even worse for us. You have a lifeline. We deserve to win the game. We didn't capitalize on our chances. Ball that is on the line is on the line. Three penalty that they were clean Kalulu penalties. Stopped the ball from going in. It's okay. I'll take the point. It's a good point. Wow. It's a point. You think so? He Absolutely. Did he did the main at home. Why don't we, why don't we yeah, talk at home, at home, it's not yeah. a good result, he, Anto. Anto was asking for it, though, before he'll be happy with a point. I, didn't so. I say before yeah, the game started it. that I was I yeah. wanted a point? You should have put your money where your mouth is. I tried. I tried to give him $100 to this guy. He said, no, 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 you should open your other account. <laughs> Here we go. To $100 later, <laughs> we still uh, <laughs> don't have. I did it too. Yeah, I could have won $1,200. Oh, yeah? That's what he said. Oh, $1,200. Oh, my God. Yeah. And how much could you lost all the best? You told no, me. I, I never lose, Mike. You come on. You're right. You're right. Wow. I mean, football. So, what do you think went wrong? Uh, you were wrong because you didn't uh, put. Uh, you did No, uh, what went wrong for I Milan? Oh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, Magnan saved wrong. you too. Bad luck. Magnan is amazing. A little bad luck. Magnan saved us. My gosh, the tackle. Oh yeah. Look like Prime Maldini with that tackle. Kalulu wasn't was perfect you guys either with that on the line. Leao is not playing mm. at the highest level for us. How can you sub somebody like that? If he's a superstar, you don't sub him. He's 20 years old. I understand Giroud. I understand somebody that is of age. 
but this guy is supposed to play three games in one day and never get tired. <laughs> oh, what is How did you sub somebody like that? I play at my age three games. Yeah, yeah. Well, you play. It's because he wasn't playing well. That's why he subbed off. Well, he got subbed off. Brian Diaz wasn't playing well either. He was playing lately, right? Yeah, a lot of those, a you lot of players in, in similar positions that weren't playing well. Two games in a row now. You lost to Fiorentina and Serie A, Fiorentina, and now Salernitana winless. Uh, but we eliminated Tottenham. That's, a, that's, that's the third game, right? Yeah, Did you a, count that one in? Isn't it so weird? Like, how do you... How do you <laughs> I said in Serie A. You got annoyed yeah. there. No, that was great. But how do you... How does it keep happening Like with, with these teams? Like, how do we make sense of that? Well, these teams are all Play not different. at the highest level. And so all their energy is spent on the Champions League. So when you have the Champions League... That's where your focus is mentally, physically. That's, it really drains you. You think Don't that's what it is? 100%. 100%. Is because it that? You go, or? you go even when Inter won the, the, the treble with Mourinho. The game before was always tough. And even the game after was tough. Because you have to deal with a lot of different energy. You have, you have to deal with um, you know, a Salernitana that needs every point to make sure that they stay up this year. And they look like they're in good position. But if they fall... They're right there in relegation zone. So, you know, for Salernitana, Salernitana this game is is a game literally of life and death. Mm-hmm. And with Milan, like like Antonio said, you miss the chances. Similar to the Inter game, you miss the chances, and then that comes to bite you in the butt. Mm. Yeah, but it, you think it's that, or because like then there's other examples. Are you going to say the same thing? You think Europa League and Conference League are the same thing? One hundred percent for those. And teams. even worse because they play on Thursday. So by playing on Thursday, you have one less day or two less days. If you, you know. Well, Lazio played on Saturday, right? No, yeah, they played on Saturday. Now they're going to play Thursday. They played Saturday. They played Thursday. Well, right now. Yeah, right now. But even the, who played last week? Fiorentina? Yeah. I think they play Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Can you check that? Yeah. So literally you have two and a half days, not even. No, it's more. It's three days. Right, it's Saturday. No, you have a little It's more. Sunday. You're going to count the Sunday as the third game day? That's yeah. when they're playing. They they're pl- playing two and a half days. Uh, they're playing Thursday and then Sunday. Yeah. So yeah. you have two and a half days for a team that doesn't have the, you know, the big the squad biggest, depth either. Yeah, the death pieces. And I saw Sadi talking about for the game hard. on Thursday. Because then he's got Thursday, he's got this match in Conference League. And then Sunday, he's got the Derby. Exactly. Yeah, so how he, about that? They're going to they're gonna play so many, rotate so many different players. They, I would bet, I bet anything that they're going to go out of the Conference League. But how does, can you not? But does that make sense? I think he wants to go I'm out sorry, of the Conference I'm League. Sorry, yeah, but does that beat. make sense? How come they give Milan the game on a Monday? <sighs> And then Lazio Roma, who both play on Thursday, they don't give them a chance to, Pete, to get the game on Monday. You keep forgetting that Milan was he played Fiorentina on the game of uh, on the anniversary of a story when the game could have been played the next day. Uh, but that ah, I but that but what is that? That has nothing to do with it. He has to do it. He has to do it. No. You needed to play. No, you needed. You should have lost the game against Fiorentina. That no, way. but you needed to play them because you had Champions League next. Yeah. I'm wondering how much it's energy spent and just more focus and like maximizing your chances because I think that's what it comes down to more. It's it's like who you're playing, who you're rotating. Yeah. I I don't know because that's what I'm going to see with Lazio, and that's why I'm nervous about them in the Conference League. We haven't had any team bail out of of Europe, get knocked out completely. We're the only league so far that hasn't had a team, all seven teams. We had Juventus who went down from uh, Champions League to Europa League, but in terms of getting knocked out, we haven't had it. Yeah. I'm scared for this Lazio just because of what's happening. Inter as well with Porto, but I don't know. I, I'm wondering if it's that or. Is it the smaller teams that are trying to play a little bit more than what we're used to in the past like decade of watching Serie A? Because I feel like the approach with a lot of teams has changed. I remember when when I would watch games, I would watch Juventus play against uh, Udinese or play against <laughs> Empoli, and you know they go there and they're like, "All right, let's see if if we can manage you know out here even with a point." Now I feel like there's a lot of teams because of the coaching. That they go in there and they say, yo, we could win this match. We could get three points. Let's press mm-hmm. them. Let's try to go for it even in the lead of the match. I'm wondering between those two things what it really is. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I think it's been like that the past few seasons for for Serie A in terms of the smaller teams always being less scared than fighting the bigger teams because they see how susceptible they are and they see there's actually weaknesses and you can see there's always surprises week in and week out. You can never guarantee, just like today, Milan against Salerno and Donovan. But why do you think that is? Because like that's not different. There's nothing really different about that than the past years. Like what's the what's the principle on why these smaller teams are believing more now? Is it the coaching? Is it the player, the quality of players that's raised? It's a combination. I, it's, philosophy. Say, it's multiple factors. I don't think it's just one thing. Okay, First of all, we have uh, 
even from the relegation teams, there's pretty good coaches, there's pretty good players all around scattered. And I think over the past years, a lot of these teams have found a have found an identity and a lot of these Serie A teams may be trying to transform from that defensive to a t more attacking minded and that's harder uh, it's easier for the smaller teams to counterattack when you do that you know when you play that kind of football that's why I feel like it's harder um, for for a lot of these defensive teams who can see the goal like maybe a Juventus or something like that because they do tend to rely on that kind of philosophy more but overall I that there's been a defensive movement from uh, from Serie A from defensive to offense, and that's what I feel like is another factor why these smaller teams have a better chance. Look because at like, counter attacks. Look at and Bologna stuff. and look at uh, Torino, like those teams that are fighting to try to get into the Conference League, yeah, uh, even Udinese, Europe, especially yeah. in the beginning of the season. But the way that they press you, they suffocate you. Like I, I can't get over Bologna when they played Inter. The goal that they scored on, it's because they're pressing them. I don't remember. I know Bologna is obviously a historic team, but I'm talking about teams in that range. I don't remember late on into matches them really trying to press and go for it. And, you know, maybe, I don't know, people it's, it's below can tell us the in the game. comments. It's the approach to the game. When the coach tells you inside the locker room, I said, guys, we got nothing to lose. We are the Cinderella's and we're going to be playing a big team. So said, we got nothing to lose. But how's that, different than, it, how's that different than past 10 years? It's the same thing. It, no, it's not. The quality, the, the level has risen so far. Those younger, those uh, those uh, small team, quote unquote, they don't have a quality set. of players or quality of coaching. Both, but the quality of players, number one, is mm. much higher than what than what we used to have. Back I feel then like it's a quality of coaching person. No, 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 it's both. It's you believe me, you can be a great too. coach if you don't have the good player. You're not gonna. Well, of you're, course, yes. Those are very good players. The names are lesser, uh, lesser. Uh, uh, the, the lesser known, the, the lesser famous, because uh, we don't know them. But when those guys they stop, they step on the field, you get to you get to see the quality. Hey, Piontek, it's not a, 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 a disgraceful guy. I mean, the guy he made <laughs> he what made, a compliment. He your boy. played for AC Milan. He played for Genoa. He played in uh, in uh, whatever he played. Yeah, in, but it was a one Germany, season wonder. Stuff. Okay, one second. So what I'm saying is, and we have the the the, the ex Inter, uh, you know, superstar of there, uh, Candreva. So those are they don't, they don't have uh, garbage. They are there because no, they yeah. wanna they wanted to take the game to you. And you know what they do? The best defense is play, is playing offense for those guys. And that's what they come. They step inside of the field. I said, if we look at the nacho, we're gonna get screwed. Mm -hmm. So what they do? They're counter and they're uh, and they're uh, running uh, uh, after you because they they press you. I didn't see them I, defending. Salernitana wasn't defending today. I think they, the 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 top teams in Serie A mm. have lowered quality than in, in let's say 10 20 years ago right so we don't have the best best players ever playing in Serie A right we have great players good players but none of them are the absolute top you know it's very rare you you find just pieces maybe you know like Milan has Teo Hernandez who I think is a top player Inter has Lautaro but your full team you don't have the all out best so there's weaknesses in in, in those top teams and then you have, like you said, the coaching style, more than just the individual coaches, it's it's worldwide. If you see the style of play has changed, the Guggen press, right? That's this new thing and Red Bull does it, all these teams do it, that it's this all out high press, high energy, you know, Fiorentina obviously with Italiano, same type of mm -hmm. mentality where it's, you know, receive the ball, uh, I'm sorry, go get the ball, you press the ball, win the ball back. So that also has changed the outcomes of a lot of games. And, um, you know, every team is in it because they can be a mistake at any given time. And look, even we didn't talk about it, not to jump into the Inter game, but Inter, the first half, took 15 shots, and Spezia, I think they took zero, okay? And all you need is when you're doing that press, when you you just need that one opportunity to, to score. And, and it changes the game. What well, were wrong for you guys? Again, away form. Yeah. Just you guys. I, it's it's like it's crazy how poor your away form is. Eight losses now, right in the in the mm -hmm. season. Yeah. I think it's in the la in the modern era, right? The or is it decade. in the in the century? You've only had one team that's been worse in, ter in terms of more losses. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is, we're in second place. That's what's insane. But, um, you know this this team is too inconsistent. I think when we when we dominate a team because we also with Bologna not that we don't we play a terrible game versus Bologna but we advance too many players you know on the Inzaghi to play this free-flowing game 
we always have these two players playing back at that point because you have the third defender playing all the way up, right? He's often overlapping, even a uh, Di Marco, whoever is playing at that time. Um, he's, you know, he's going into the game. I see Inzaghi really stick Damn. to this three man back. Jeez, easy by Zag. Okay. Thanks. He you. sticks to this three man back. When it's Usually like, people say, bless you. He says, he's. I know, right? It's like. No, with Inzaghi, he sticks to his three man back. It's like, geez, can you just. He doesn't change formation. Change that formation. Oh gosh. Add an extra midfielder in there. Why do we stick with his three man? Even when he added on that third striker, because the Inter fans obviously were giving him a lot of problems that he, he waits too long to add that third striker. We got to go into win. He, make, he substitutes a midfield. He gets Barella out, right? Barella was out, I think. Pretty sure. Um. You know, you, you take out these extra midfielder to just keep on this the 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 three, and it's like, come on, man, change that formation. Did Borella come out? I'm pretty sure. What say that again? Barella, he, he was subbed he came out, right? 66. Yeah, like oh, yeah. you don't sub Barella out in the 66 minute. Yeah. Maybe he's focused already on Champions League at that point, trying to save up. But that's a player. Even if he's having a shit game, you have to keep him in. You gotta mm. go win this game. You cannot lose to Spezia. Yeah. And what happens? You bad. lose to Spezia. And then even Dumfries. You get the penalty, you look like you're going to tie this game 1-1, whatever. It is it is what it is. At least you don't go out losing. And then he f clumsily fouls, um, you know, Spezia. Are you Spezia done with Dumfries? Uh, this year he's, he's been awful. He's Everyone. been awful. And the only thing that sucks is because, uh, that sucks is that he had a great showing with Holland in the mm, World Cup. Should have sold him then. That <laughs> That's Peter. Are you saying so clumsy? Are I you hate players that are clumsy. We're talking about Inter not performing this season, last season. Do you think? See, I feel like a hater now. Bring mm. bring up Inzaghi, but um, and I don't want to keep I don't want to keep branding about it. But if you have you're tied with Spitz, yeah, look like you guys oh, look like Inter's gonna come back. Classic win Inter at that, and then you concede another goal against Spitz, yeah, and it just looks. It looks so it, it looks so bad on Inter's point of view because this whole season we're this season and last season we're, season we're talking about making the same mistakes over and over and not individuals not performing or how, how they haven't and Inzaghi not doing enough and it's just the same old story with him. They so. could just go back to our last two podcasts if you want to hear our opinion on Inzaghi. So don't so we don't keep repeating it. I think it just uh, reinforces hey, it. You want to know who's, something funny? Who, who scored the goal against uh, Inter? I don't know. I didn't watch the no, game. The only thing the first goal. Oh. oh, Maldini? I heard. Yo, it's so funny. Yesterday, we were at Samuel's party. You know, we have Walter Inter Samuel. Walter Samuel's party. Not uh, just a Samuel down the, the block. Hey, yes. you know, Samuel, that, that, like Samuel Adams. Aldo Tripicchio, which is a friend. Yes. Inter uh, president. He's the president of the, all the uh, inter clubs of all United States. So uh, all, is it all? I think it's just New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. I think it's the entire United and, States. And, and, and Inter and uh, Milan too, right? Uh, no, no. So no. that's what's funny. He said. I remember when he before he presented, uh, introduced um, Samuel. Samuel. Uh, he said, you know, it, it, it's like a concert that every party we have, every time we have a party with an, our inter superstar coming to the to the, the dinner dance, no way. Th they lose the game. No <laughs> way. It's true. That's what he said. And I said, wow. I'm sure that's a reason. So no more Inter parties then? No, I'm going. I enjoy oh, it to begin with. Even and though you're a Milan fan. Let me finish about it. Let me finish. At some point, <laughs> we somebody recognized me and my friend Mike. Mike. Ponytail. Oh, Ponytail Mike. Yeah, because we are a Milan fan. I said, hey, Antonio, what are you doing here? This is an Inter party. And I said, uh, Ah, well, I, I'm an Inter fan too. I said, no, you're not. I said, you're an AC Milan fan. So sure enough, the, I, I was threw out. You out. out. No, almost. You I were said, outed? I was outed. They escorted you out the building? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, bottom, you. the bottom line, I said to myself, Yo, you gave <laughs> me that lucky. This young lady, she gave me a great idea. I said to Mike, I said, hey, Mike, we are the only two AC Milan fan over here. Let's see. Let's take a picture with Walter somewhere in the, in the middle and the two of us on the side. Did you tell him at least? I did. Oh. I said, hey, Walter, by the way, I have to be honest with you. Oh, nice. After I said, picture. I'm the biggest AC Milan fan. And then he looked at me like, what? <laughs> Wait, before or after the picture no, did you tell him? the picture. Oh, okay. I'm and surprised. I said, this guy Careful. is even worse. He's got a You know, he was part of the Argentinian national team. I know, I know. Coach. I didn't realize it. Yeah. Assistant coach. So anyway, it was very, very uh, nicest guy. I mean, uh, he's the nicest guy. I heard that this guy on the field, I mean, I seen him play. But I said, uh, this guy here it's was bad news for anybody. He's a tough, yeah. tough Argentine. Yeah, I got a question. I, I got a question feel this for you. one of the nicest guys that you want ever around. Mm -hmm. I got a question for you. Go ahead. It was weird when Luke, when uh, Lautaro missed a penalty kick. Mm. There's a video where Lukaku is saying to who I can only assume is uh, Inzaghi. He's looking over to the bench and saying, why am I not mm. taking it? Why am I not taking it? And when you check the stats, 
uh, Lukaku's never missed a penalty mm-hmm. in Serie A mm-hmm. in his career. He's now 14 for 14 after that one. <laughs> and I think uh, Lautaro's missed four, something like that. Nine out of, I don't remember if it was mm-hmm. 14 or, or mm-hmm. some, something around those numbers. And the, the, the thing that baffled my mind is when I listened to Inzaghi's explanation afterwards and he said, yeah, they're both our two penalty kick takers. We just haven't had them on the field at the same time for a ah, penalty. Yeah. And I'm like, a wait a second. Yeah. You don't decide that before you know they're playing together? But besides the point, take the responsibility. Yeah, Say Lautaro is my penalty kick taker. Lukaku left us when we wanted. Oh, damn. Team. You no, took that for a while. Look okay. at but Lukaku's like got better stats. Doesn't matter. Okay, if you make a decision as a coach, you stand by the, the decision. So at that point, if Lautaro went to take it, he's our penalty kick taker. He missed it. It happens to everyone. That's it. You're and okay. you end it right there. No, not Wait. that I'm okay. I'm okay with Lautaro taking it. But what I don't like is that you try to create excuses yeah. or you try to say, oh, they're both of, eh, this and that. Like, who, why? I, don't, I, don't, I, never heard of, I never heard of both before in my Me. life. Me. There's a penalty kick taker. There's a penalty kick taker. There are right. moments where the players talk to each other and they say, I'm feeling better. You want to take it. But not that you have this sort of thing where Lukaku is like confused on a pitch. Well, I've also uh, Lukaku, Lautaro, Chanaloglu has taken in the past. Remember mm. it was the Milan. Yeah, he took yeah, it yeah. and, and is, is good. Who would you so, make the penalty kick taker? <sighs> You have you have a penalty against Porto, let's say you have a penalty against Porto. Uh-huh. Uh, Lautaro, Lukaku, and Hakan are all on the pitch. Chanaloglu. <laughs> you, this guy went went Switzerland. He went. No, he went there. He's, the, he's got cold blood. I don't know. The Tell guy's me, got cold you blood. You want my advice, Pete? Go to FedEx, take Lukaku and uh, Dumfries, like Marco was saying before, and just ship them. Actually, overnight them. Well, the thing is with Lukaku is <laughs> back to where they you came got, to you watch Chelsea and uh, what Lukaku no, was in Chelsea. Chelsea, and, uh, Chelsea. Yeah, where is that by PSV? But we're gonna oh, sell him for money. We'll money. Make, we'll make money. Yes, because we bought him for eleven million. <laughs> good luck. No, we we bought him for a, a really good price. So he's had enough to be able to sell to yeah, make money. Gonna, the only thing is he's got to pick it up a little bit to be able to get some more interest. But and Manchester United was always throwing stuff in too. And as a, no, as a, well, with Inzaghi is a different discussion. But it, it yeah, always comes down to the same thing, it's and like not so sticker. good. You know, back into the rabble. But it comes <laughs> down to who who else is there. When you're Inter, Juventus, Milan, you can't just pick somebody out of a hat. You have to have something to base it on, yeah. and like. You know, Galliani, we said before about Paladino with Monza. Yeah. He had this feeling for him. And the same way that Saki, you know, he had this feeling for Saki, right? You either have a feeling or you have to go after the, the for sure guy. So, But you can't afford the for sure guy. And we can't likely. afford it. You, you would have to take a bet on a younger coach. I think, I, th- I, I really think Juventus and Inter are in very similar positions come the summer. Obviously, Inzaghi's not going to be sacked. Uh, How do you know that? I, like he's not gonna be I have a good mid-season. feeling that he's going to be sacked. One second, let me finish my point. They're not going to be sacked mid-season. mid-season no, it's not going to happen. And maybe this comes down to you. Where, are you happy? If he gets you to the next round of the Champions League, are you happy enough? You're still in Coppa Italia. You're in second place. You're far from first. But are you still happy with that as a result? You're not happy, but it's kind of like when you, uh, you, know, you get a 65-70, you still pass... Bro. You know the the class, so you keep him. I told you it comes down to who is the replacement. If you're gonna pick somebody that does not have the accolades that has won in the past, or Marotta does not feel this is a uh, you know a predestined uh, coach, young coach. That so we you don't, like do you want. don't. But I'm saying for yeah. you, Peter, because we can't think about. We don't know what Marotta is gonna do. Is there like a Tiago Motta, or is there a young coach out there that you see? I want him oh, I instead. Can- the guy that I would go after is not available. Who is he? Dead Zerbi. That's who you want. And that's all the Italian teams that messed up. They should have went after this guy. Okay? Mm-hmm. He should never have gone to Shakhtar Donetsk. He should have been within a Serie A team, within a top team in Serie A for what he did with Sassuolo. He's the guy okay? that you would throw in Zaghi out for. 100%. Okay. Understood. Let's move on. Uh, we got we got a couple topics to talk about. Champions uh, League. You said Champions League. Champ- Champions League. We have we we mentioned a little bit in Champions League. And we're gonna watch again. The this podcast is gonna come out the day of uh, Inter Porto. So not too much reason to talk about it yet. Or reflect on it afterwards. Stop making that face to me. No, I'm not making Hopefully, the face. I mean, my uh, biggest fear is your away form. I'm terrified by your away form because uh, especially with Porto at home. Uh, I know the way that the game went. You should have scored more goals, but Inter away scares me. Let's talk about Juventus. Uh, obviously, they won against Sampdoria, a match that they were up 2-0, came back 2-2. They managed to win the game. Uh, big storyline for me was uh, Vlaovic in the match. Uh, 
I've never seen, I've really seen a player more frustrated in a game than him to try to score goals. At first, a lot of the problem was, and it probably still is, the team not creating the chances for him. But even in this case, he was getting chances. The ball just did not want to go into the back of the net. He had one time that he hit the ground. He was so mad that he missed. Steps up for a penalty kick. Takes it so hard. It goes the right way because the goalkeeper gets beat. Hits the post. Couldn't catch a break. Then he even makes good movement. You know, Kostic, I think it was Kostic, sent it across. He heads it. Hits uh, Aldero, makes a save, hits a crossbar. And then Sule, a young kid, scores his first goal in the Serie A. But man, you know, I'm wondering what he has to do to be able to buy a goal. And I want to put it out here, what we think. Is it a Dusan Vlaovic problem right now? Because he's he's gone too many games now without scoring. Is it a Dusan Vlaovic problem? Is it a problem of the team not creating chances? Or is it just a case of he's lacking confidence at the moment and he'll get back to his scoring ways? It's all of the above. All right, yeah, guys, you, you all keep saying it's all of the above. It's you got to give an above. answer. Okay, the answer. There's more the one way. Can't be split 33.3%. He's, he's feeling the pressure to play uh, to play uh, uh, in Juventus. This guy here is not a top player the way you, you just uh, you say, yeah, Vlaovic, Vlaovic. is like, you know, there is no Vlaovic. This guy here was a middle-of-the-range team. Fiorentina was the perfect fit for him, for me. Maybe another team like, uh, I don't know, I wanted a stretcher. Maybe Lazio or Roma could have done, could have been a better fit for him. But Juventus has got a lot of pressure. You don't score one or two, one or two, uh, uh, you know, uh, two, three games in Juventus. You're starting to, uh, to, uh, to talk to yourself in front of the mirror. No, I think, Andrew, you've been a little too harsh. So um, what is it, Mike? I think just, uh, strikers go through this all the time. Um, I mean, Giroud, he just broke his duck, but we know he's a, a very good striker throughout his career, and he's older too on the older side. But you can see just, just see from Vlavic, just from his movements, how he is. He's very hungry. He's extremely competitive. Uh, holds up the ball. He's he's a com he's a complete striker. He's just having a bad form, and as soon as he gets a goal or two, I think he'll be back on track. It's this is normal in any striker's career, any good striker's career, I think. Yeah, some of the moments have been good, and then other times it hasn't been. He had a couple times where his touch, you know, just took him. Yeah. I feel like he's that's trying. Confidence. I feel that's like confidence. he's trying so hard. How many at weeks times. he's been scoreless right now? Um, I re I think it was like five hundred and fifty <sighs> minutes, Mike. If you could just give me a double check. So six. Weeks, and a lot six of his games. a lot of his goals, no, you know, just the way that they're coming, they're not the same as like in Fiorentina. But it's because the way the Fiorentina uh, play, they set him up for goals that were. Uh, number one, easier to score, but they were just more positive in possession. Lots of creations inside of the box. Six games. Six mm -hmm. games? Yeah, yeah, six games. So it, it's mm. it's a lot. Lukman, too. Lukman is on the same thing. I think it's six or seven games now, but he only played two minutes, actually. So maybe we don't count that one. But, you know, there's a couple of players that are going through a little bit of a, of a goal drought. But, yeah, I think Vlaovic is top. I think he's, top. he's going through the same... Uh, uh, a lot of players. He's not a striker, though. He's a winger. But I think, I think that... It is, it's still, for me, it is, uh, this game was on him, but a lot of times in the past, it's because of the way Juventus play that they just don't play a positive style of football at all. And he needs that sort of creation from the midfield and, you know, crosses from inside of the box. That, that's the reason why he's not scoring as many goals. For it's me, he's a top player. He's not the most important player of Juventus. Of too. Come of on, you have to just be honest. Uh, he's not the most important player of Juventus. When Before, Di Maria is on the field, then Di saying. Maria Look, is. Di Maria, you got Di Maria, you got po I mean, Pogma. It's is, is, is a case uh, on his own. He's but another you one. You got a lot of players. You got a case. You got, it's one of the four or five. So even though, but he's still, you know, I don't understand why he feels so much responsibility. And I saw him just hugging, uh, what's his name? Stankovic. Uh, Stankovic at the end of the game because uh, he must have said something to him. I said, hey, take it easy, calm down, don't worry about it. Make the game come to you. I don't know what, he, what did he say. Said, Stankovic said he went into the locker room after. He said yeah. he put his arm around yeah, him and gave him a hug that. like he was his son. Yeah. And he said that he's a great guy, he's a great person, and the goals will come. Mm. You know? Which is class from Stankovic, by the way, because your team just lost. Mm -hmm. You have every right to be pissed off. You have every right to go over your he's team. A the fact man, that he went so there, he's a country man. He's a friend, I guess. So yeah, nah, but it's the same. You know, as as everyone pointed out to it, like it's a confidence thing. I think with Blahovic, where when you're a striker, you need to see the ball in the back of the net. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how it happens. You know, obviously they try with a penalty, get that ball in the back of the net, you get that goal, and all of a sudden you feel it. Um, a lot of strikers are very streaky. There's very few that every game are so clinical so he's still you know young enough i think he, he has already the the proof of what he can do his movement has always been spectacular he's a he's a hungry guy and he just needs to get that that goal and uh, just to really kick start him he needs but, to chill out yeah man. yeah it, like you said he needs to be able to just relax get that confidence and just do uh you know a lot of it it's reps it's repetition 
But that's also the hard thing when you when you don't have the ball a lot, you kind of you lose you, you, You're lacking. You're lacking, and mm-hmm. so all of a sudden, it's just like you said, you run yourself crazy mm-hmm. to try to score the goal. <laughs> He definitely was. Yeah. Like he was over you can trying. Tell. Yeah, which you is, can tell. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. He's got to do the Inzaghi method. Yeah. Which is take two guys from the Primavera team oh, and go score on them. Wow. People in Inzaghi, obviously, is who I'm talking about. Not even Inzaghi. Look at Inzaghi. That guy was an opportunist. Like as a striker, number nine, you got to be able to be in the right place. And you got to know how to just put the ball in the back. But that's, you can that's kick not, the ball you can't into teach the that, No, you can't. That. But, he, just like but he has it. He has it. You tell me Inzaghi never went. Goalless, we can't make it. Not uh, for, not for, not yes. for, no, I bet not. you. No, no, no. That's a good thing that we got to fact check. Super people, huh? super people. He was deadly. And who did he play with? Who was on that team? Ah, wow. Eh, Seedorf, Kaka. Wait a moment. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a moment. Don't Pirlo. take it. Don't take anything away from us. Shevchenko. Have you seen his goals? He's the biggest opportunist. Hundred percent. I think that like was you. his words. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he said. That, what's what I'm saying is, you do not. That stuff, it's you have to work hard too. It's positioning, it's positioning. No, in Italy, they call it il fiuto del goal. You know where the ball is gonna be. The guy knows. Antonio, the number nine yeah. is like, as you said, the coach, right? You have to have the players around you. If you don't get the service, you're never gonna score. You can be the best strike. Halan could be the best striker. For me, he's the best number nine, right? Mm-hmm. And Halan. he gets criticized. Okay, he gets criticized. Which is crazy. But what I'm gonna say is. If he was to play with, uh, I don't know, Cremonese, I mean, how many score. goals is he going to score? I don't know. I don't think he'll score uh, a lot. Mm. I mean, he played with Dortmund, play which City. obviously it's not that same Dortmund's level. one of the but higher, but, but one so of the better Juventus. teams. In- so is Juventus. Yes, but the style of yeah, play. Yeah, the style. The style of play. That's why. I think Haaland and Juventus struggles. Hey, you have, you're too young. I don't <laughs> you know. So? You're, you're too so. young to remember I people. So. Course, Maybe yeah, you too. Why guys, you sound surprised? It's guys, a different you philosophy. Be, you play more uh, defensive. Mike, you guys are very young. You do not remember. See? I remember. People in Zaki played. Ooh. Oh, in Zaki, I remember. was lurching all the time. Yeah, he was offside. He was born offside. offside. In, so what he did, he kept the other team, he kept the other team fair. In other words, I said, oh, look at this guy here. Watch out. The one ball is going to punish us. The team never stretched all the way to the top, the opposite team, because of was in Zaki. was just very close over there, just looking around. So that one, that, that his positioning and his tactical uh, intelligence, he, he, he was deadly. Hmm. For uh, the opposite, uh, the opposition. <laughs> you scared me for some reason. Yeah. He, he, he was deadly. If you're not smart, you can have all the power and, and the speed. You need brain. You need brain cells. The guy he had it. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of brain cells, did you see the ball's goal oh, against Asuolo? That. My gosh. I, that shows you that in Juventus the brain cells are all gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you know Talking why. About brain cells. The Juventus beer. Oh, there you Kills go. Kills the brain cells. Oh, but they, oh, yeah, they, they have a beer, the beer now? They have a brand? Oh, you didn't hear? No, I didn't know that. Didn't oh, that? They drink it I, I saw it. I just, I don't really <laughs> care about that kind of stuff. You guys made it the biggest mistake. What a spectacular goal. You know what's it, the funniest thing about the Dybala, though? Mm-hmm. This is the, the, the best part about it, is that they said that he was too injury prone. Please. Yet they bought Pogba, who, <laughs> if you look at his injury list, what he played at Manchester United, they got rid of the guy that was inside their team for being injury prone, where he's played so many games now, and he's so deadly. And then they they got a guy in that's played 35 minutes and been very uh, injured. I wanted Pogba. I'm going to say it right now. So, yes, but I'm just saying it's funny the, the double standards in terms yeah, of like what they wanted to bring. It happens, and it's a mistake. But you make that sort of mistake, it go, goes again once that the management bragging. of Juventus have no idea what they're doing. You were bragging. It's the project. Salivating, right? Don't forget Vlaovic. That's it. It's another. Tutto fumo. In Italy, we say tutto fumo, niente arrosto. You know, you put something on the grill. Smoke, no fire. At the end of the day, you want a piece of meat and you want to eat it. That guy, you put him That's on the grill crazy. and says, what is the meat? It's crazy how little he plays. Oh, but and you know, how they much just make minutes, brisket. You know? yeah, but well, also, do you know what's crazy, Delicious. too? I shouldn't just say injury because a lot of it is his fault, too. Like, at first, it's you surgery. know, a player's injured. You know, sometimes your heart goes out to the player, right? Like, Giuseppe Rossi is a player who I feel so bad for because of how injured he's been. Mm. But Pogba has a lot of responsibility in the minutes that he hasn't played because he got injured. He didn't want to do the surgery. He wanted to do physical therapy because he wanted to play World Cup, which I sort of understand. I could sympathize. I could I could understand where he's coming from in terms of wanting to go to France. As Juventus, they don't want that. But okay, understood. Then you come back. You get hurt again because you didn't do the surgery properly again because you don't want to be out for too long. Then you finally make your debut. And then the next time that you're about to start, you show up late or disciplinary problems. To me, that is... And, and also, there's no way in hell... 
I mean, from the way I see, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. For me, there's no way that he showed up 10 minutes late or even an hour late. Because you think if you show up 30 minutes late, you're going to put it, Juventus puts that out and doesn't just find him or something or something behind the scenes and just lets him play. To put out to everyone, I think it must have been something worse than just showing up late a couple of minutes. And now you're, and then you're finally okay to come back in the team and you're injured for and three especially weeks. Juventus, Juventus always like to keep stuff hidden. So they never really say what's going on. They keep, I think, they I keep think a lot of stuff to themselves. In, it's, a message, the club. it's a message that they are mm. sending him that they said they made a mistake of getting him back. I think they're going to ship him out. Well, they, they he has a contract with the club and they they're gave gonna, him a longer term contract. They're going to they're gonna try to uh, to renegotiate or with another team or just to maybe uh, swap him with somebody else. Who would Want a, who would want a player that plays 35 minutes in a season, Anto? You're giving to Winter. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about Dybala and uh, and, Sass and Roma uh, with Sassuolo. They lost. They lost this game four to three. That was crazy. Crazy one. We were watching it uh, when we were at the Via Reggio party. Everybody had their phones out and, and we're watching the game and we're going crazy because Sassuolo were up 2-0. <laughs> Loriente, we, we, we spoke about him a couple times on this show. Two goals, an assist. He's such a fantastic player. And I went on a deep dive of him like a couple months ago just because I love those kind of tricky players. He's one of my favorite in Serie A. He was actually, he grew up in the same youth system as Mbappe. And they were uh, mm. they were uh, roommates. Mm. They grew mm. up in the same room. So they're, they're, they're best friends. Mm. Uh, it was, I think, the Clairefontaine Academy, which like all the best French players came out of. Anyway, Roma without uh, Dybala, without Pellegrini, without, you know, lots of uh, key pieces. They lose to Sassuolo. And I think there's nothing more Roma in the world than beating Juventus last week mm -hmm. and then losing to Sassuolo the following week, which is just... Unbelievable. What are you trying How to say? What are you trying to say? That they're very, they're Sassuolo be they similar. Sassuolo is not a shitty team. Well, this the, season has been playing good on the position. Okay, they also lost to Cremonese. I know. They, Roma lost to Cremonese, who hadn't won a game. So if you want me to reinforce the statement with that, I'll, this I'll go with that. This is to rate, rate to you what we were just saying before that Salernitana is not a, a crappy team, Spets is not a crappy team. What about Cremonese? The level, uh, okay. It's like, Cre okay, they're great. Cremonese <laughs> eliminated Napoli from the Coppa Italia. Yeah, but Napoli All right. was. So, what I'm saying to you, Marco, the level, the quality of yeah, the players that higher, we have right now in Serie A is much mm -hmm. higher. Serie A is not what it used to be. You have two, three teams and every, everything else true. is like. Serie A, it's a very, very, very difficult uh, What's not campionato. True? No, and very the Hades, difficult. The Hades of, of Italy, there was the seven sisters. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So such as who was the seven sister? The you don't know this. Clubs. Inter, Milan, Juve, uh, Roma, Lots Lazio. Not as much as you think. They call it Gina. No, um, no. Parma, P, Parma P, was P, there. P, P, P. When they say the seven sister, they they is because they want them to feel more inclusive and all the stuff. They Parma were only Crespo, Veron. four teams: Inter, nah, Milan, Juventus. On. Maybe once in a while they will be swapping Before. between Lazio, uh, one Lazio or Roma. Roma or one, two thousand one. That's it. No, Fiorentina. Come on, don't talk about Fiorentina. Fiorentina. Batistuta. Do you remember yeah, the so players? What? But then they were not up there. They made it to the, the UEFA League or something like that. I that mean, crazy. getting what he he says, like no. Juventus had 30, 30 something. Come I on. mean, between Juventus. Inter and Milan, or they have 60 Scudetti, yeah. 60 or 70 Scudetti. Yeah, the majority of them. That's what it means. But, the, so, but it's the same situation as now. Who's going to win the, the Champions Who's going to win the UEFA, Europa League, whatever? You know? It's the same situation. We don't, so have, seven, anyway. we don't anyway. have seven sisters right now. Not even, not even half a sister or half a brother. So we don't have it. Okay? <laughs> no step brothers, no step sisters. Yeah. <laughs> We have about 15. All, all I know, cousins. All I know all is cousins we've been, or uh, whatever. All I know is we've been talking about all these teams and the one thing that is always popping up the same is how inconsistent these teams are. Yeah. So I don't know if it's the other teams playing better or the, they're not playing as good or the extra competitions or the coaches aren't good or the players are doing this. But there's or stupid decisions like Kumbula. There, there's so many <laughs> things there. I just don't know where to put Kumbula. it. I, did you see what so Kumbula strange. did? He kicked what, what uh, I, Berardi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So That's stupid. not a red card though. What? I mean, I don't think it's a penalty. Do you think it's a red I, card though? Too? I'm more, yeah, probably. Really a red card. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He's a red card. I don't, I don't like it as a penalty though. Am I crazy to think it, I don't yeah, want it as a penalty? Stop. I don't think it's a red card, bro. Give him a yellow. I don't understand uh, the, the, the decision making of the referees or. Uh, I didn't like that. It's because I, I didn't see a real goal scoring opportunity from there. Like I get that he kicked the guy. That's a disciplinary action. I don't know. I, I get why it's given. I get that it has to be given. But personally. I don't want it. And also, Kumbula, I mean, come on, bro. You yeah. never play. You never play. Mourinho doesn't trust you at all. He's never trusted you all season. Mm. And then you play, and that's what you do. You lose your mind from that. It's like, 
you, you have to be you have to be smarter he, he than that. He needs a change. He was great at Hellas Verona. He needs a change. Yeah, I think he's a good player. It's just uh, he's, he's, he's he needs been, a change. It's like Romagnoli with Milan. Yeah. When you need Something. a change, yeah, right. Rachmani was a better Verona defender than him. Seems like huh? Well, Rachmani became. Rachmani, yeah, but, now, but he also Rachmani, had a, yeah, had a hard But year. he was always behind, which Rachmani? was great. He had a tough, because he was behind Manolas. He was always he's the right. third one, but now he's the best one. No, he's, he's, did, he's a really good. Yeah, he's he's done saying. really well. Look, Manolas in Napoli, for example, was a super... Uh, Roma, in, in was, Roma super, was a superstar. Yeah, Napoli, Napoli, no. Was, yeah. was he like too, garbage. Too what much pizza. He lost motivation. Did he? He's not an Olympiacos? No. Oh, oh my man! He's selling Sublakis. He's selling Sublakis on uh, on. Uh, <laughs> that guy was such a good player. <laughs> Yo, at his, at his prime, money. at his like in his best, my in Roma, was he was the best defender in Serie A mm-hmm. for a year. He had, he had, nah, he had a year where I think he was he the was best the, defender nah, in the Kylian league. Was up there, man. Bro, his speed. Him. He had crazy speed for a center back. Yeah, but I think uh, the speed took away a lot of his problems of his mispositioning that a lot of people didn't notice, and I didn't really say because I don't want to fault say it. But that's Mike. You know the scene. I remember it. I said it. I don't know. He had that year. He speed scored the goal sa- his speed against Barca. Sa- yeah, I know. It was nice. Made up for but any mistakes. speed made up yeah. a lot of the some defensive mistakes that he wasn't going on. But yeah. I know. I thought he was the best. I thought, a, I thought he, he had a, a season case, where he was man. the best defender in the league. Okay, we have some important uh, better, some important center. topics to cover. We, I, I want to talk about the Champions League. What about the Champions League? The Champions League. Oh, we're going to see the Inter, uh, the Inter uh, hopefully making true. Not only because I want it. Because uh, <laughs> I want, I'm i celebrating the, uh, the idea that uh, on the draw, we're going to we're gonna be, he's going to be facing AC Milan. And maybe one of us is going to go through. Well, but wait, we I think we talk about it afterwards. Oh, yeah, wow. Maybe we do. Oh, we I think, I think we should do a Wednesday podcast. Oh boy, okay. If I'm you in. guys are available, okay. If you're not, no problem. Anto, you'll be here probably, right? <laughs> I will, of course. <laughs> you're always here. Wait, what's your because you're because you're, you're committed. That's what's why. What's insinuating? Don't listen. Don't, 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 don't take the bait. Well, what are you trying to say? They got nothing better to do. Are you staying here all day? What's he trying to say? Mike, should I give him my hand? Is there a better place to be? There you go, Mike. How did that turn against me? Oh, We're, okay. And I think Friday is a draw as well. Mm. You guys hang out with each other too much. Mm. 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 <laughs> you guys sound like okay. you're hungry. <laughs> guys. What's I'm next? Gonna, I, got a, I got a topic. Mm. Uh-oh. Quadadona. No, oh, give me a break. <laughs> wow, wait, how do you get mad Come at on. this? Come on, what are you doing to you? In not even to, to can compare. I mean, the spectacular goal, whatever you want, but it's one on a life. On Get out of here. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah, not he scores the most wait, more wait, goals. So you think it's a wonder season for him? Or you're saying it's just all one so. kind of player? No, I think it's, so. it, it's, it's not. All right, we're player. not worried. I'm sorry, but we're not starting the conversation <laughs> with that. We're talking about how incredible Kvada is. For me, the face of the league. He's a superstar of this campionato. He scores the important goals. He scores goals on his own. He creates them out of nothing. He's got how many defenders in front of him on Atalanta. Chops them up with his classic chop. Puts the ball into the back of the net. He scores the goals. Like, yeah, that's what I love about him. I love him that he scores the tough goals. Like, the, the you know, Osiman is very important. Not taking anything away from him. But if you tell me one player on Napoli, the most important player. And, of course, this is going with already the situation that... Napoli's a team and they're a squad and everyone works together. But if you had to pick one player, for me, it's not even close that it's Kvaratelia. I wouldn't say it's not close. Okay, That's but almost if you have like to choose one, him. if you have to choose one, who I'd is it? I'd pick Vada, but I wouldn't say it's close. Okay. It's also that a lot. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but I love, I love a player yeah, like that. No, I, I do too. When, when do we have good. players like that yeah, come to our Marco. league and do this well? He's a more exciting posi- in the position yes. he plays more exciting. Marco, yeah, you watch he's a winger's fancier, fun to watch. You've been watching too many cartoons. He's not a Maradona. And it's never gonna be a Maradona. We're talking about God over here, okay? So do not, do not misspeak about God. It's an exaggeration. Only one God, and that's Diego. So I, and the, it's a compliment for him. I hope uh, you know. I understand where you're coming from, but uh, it's far. <laughs> I mean, it's good. I'm not from actually far. comparing him to Maradona. Oh, oh, you think I'm not actually comparing. You, when you said if, a Maradona, if Maradona is the God, then Quaragelia is the Messiah. Because <laughs> This guy, one season, I dude. agree, Andre. Okay. But he's so the way that he's yeah, scoring. Can we stop being so negative, he's man? Not, Jesus not Christ, negative. guys, we have to uh, we have to embrace all these great oh, players. What? First thing you say is is bad about him, and then we're pushing back. No, Yo, absolutely not. First, we I have like, to praise wish, somebody that's I'll support, the superstar. I will give him. I will give Napoli Leao, and I will give them even Florenzi. I'll give him that. What? We'll take that deal. We'll take Throw yeah. Mike in the deal too. Who would take the Mike? Then we have a pretty fans. decent. Then we got a pretty I'll decent. I'll give Mike Leao, Florenzi. Maybe I'll throw. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, why did you say Florenzi? Magnan. Would you give Magnan? No, Magnan. No, I'm I sorry. Know. Sorry, Florenzi. Can we talk yeah. about Kvada, please? No, yeah, but what I'm saying he, he the way that he plays, tasty. 
you can't you can't understand what he's gonna do next. Okay, he scores goals in any which way. It's not like you say, oh, once you stop him this way, then that's it. You can't. He's not gonna be mm-hmm. able to to do it. But uh, I think Spalletti even said, once you tur- turn your shoulder, you know, and turn around, he's past you already. He's gonna beat you because he's gonna just. Like you said, like this classic goal, like Toloi, who's a national team player. I wouldn't say he's a great national team player, but he's a national team player for Italy. That's Anto's favorite phrase, national team and, player. And uh, <laughs> he, look, he, was look, there. he looked like a, a lost child. He, <laughs> was look, he, was, he was like a kid look in the supermarket looking for his mom. All right? <laughs> That's what he looked like. Yeah, you got a Good point. Good analogy. I wish Vada was a Greek man. Uh, I'll tell you what. We were saying the same thing about Leao last year. Oh, Leao, 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 best player of the people. Different, different. Leao is all speed. So his his agility and his ability. Not it's all, one all. season. It's one season. I applaud him. Also, He's also, doing also, Leao, 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 let me tell you. Wow. Let too. me tell you. Hold on. That's true. That's you true. Take that's away, true. You take away Leao's speed. His technical ability is very good. But it's not this insane. Or if you take yeah, away yeah, the speed from any player, okay. But no, you, you're d- you adapt, Vada has you more adapt, of a technical you adapt, touch, a more technical well, touch. I agree with those. You with know? Del Piero, with Totti, with Cristiano Ronaldo, these guys, their speed at the time, they were able to to turn it Dominate. on. And then when they had to adapt, they still were able to adapt and and be as important to the team because that technical ability was that yeah. much higher. When you have a Leal, for me, Leal, once he loses his speed, he's not going to have the same. Effect on the game, and then with Kvaraschelia, but that guy, I don't think he needs to run by you. Like yeah. obviously, it's an added weapon, but that guy would be able to turn you, yeah. even just his technical ability alone. Yes. That's the that's the that's no, he's right. unselfish too. Right. The crazy thing about him, too, I mean, I know there was one time where he dribbled a couple players, and I think Angisa got pissed off at him yeah. for not playing that's the part ball of back. His game. I, I get it, but I do think that he's very unselfish. Like I think the crosses that he puts into the box, the amount of space that he opens up for uh, his yeah. oppositions. You know, there's a couple times where he's being double teamed. He knows he could play simple, and that's such an important factor for a talented player to also be able to play simple. It's an added factor, and the fact that Napoli win this game against. Sorry, see, no, no, go ahead. I was, cool. no, was going to change topic. Oh, you're going to change. I was just going to say the IQ of of Quadraschelia is what makes him this player. For me, well he knows the I went to make the right decisions. Mm. At times when he dribbles, he can over exaggerate, but that's also part of a, a player that's going to go after a man. You're going to have one v one. You have to take him on. Yeah. If you, you know, don't take him on, you're not going to. I love him, but that's, what, that's what's so beautiful about that. And I'm just saying personally. Obviously, I love I love Lobotka because it was a position that I played in, and I could appreciate the small things that he does. Mm-hmm. But as just like a fan of the sport, mm-hmm. and when you're just watching. He leaves you like you're holding your breath yeah. when he gets the ball because you're like, what piece of magic is about to happen that we're going to talk about all week long? And I replay that goal like 70 times because of how great it is. Like, yeah. you love players like that. No, I, and I think a big factor also with Gvara is he doesn't need the spotlight. He doesn't need like, he doesn't talk after the field. He keeps his mouth shut. He does what he's supposed to. And he just puts his head down. He works. He's humble. And I feel like that's another added bonus to him. It helps. Or it's that, against that, him. Against? Yeah. What do you mean? Maybe that's why the world doesn't talk about Kvada. Remember, like, Holland, when he was going in Dortmund, so many of his interviews went viral because of the way that he spoke but, and stuff, and he got so much hype. Player. Like, Kvada, if you think about it... He's a football it, player. No, I know, but I'm like, saying, like, Holland about. had that, like, added attraction to him that got him... I mean, he was playing exactly. at Dortmund. Yeah, Kvada's yeah. doing this at Napoli, and yeah. Kvada's incredible. It's Obviously, not, not as, trying to compare the person, players. It's not his personal. But I got what you're saying. People liked him more just because he had a more exactly. personality. But if you're putting just on the football pitch, that I think that's an added bonus uh, for having a play like Vi. He doesn't bring any extra stuff that you don't want to see. Personally, you know? I hope it stays. I hope he yeah, stays I like th- that. He seems like that kind of guy, but we'll see. Listen, they're gonna figure him out. Believe me, this oh, is snap, just one man. year. They've had a whole season, season and they have I, I know, I know. Listen, Damn. this year has been very unusual. Don't forget, we oh, had, come on. Let me just say something. Last season also, if we, you think had, about it. we had the World Cup. It's a lot of stuff. This guy's new on the league. It's the first time that he's been playing in Italy. The same There's, way that how many games did they play so far? The teams are yeah, already we're 27 made. games in, and, and, and the teams are already set. So okay. they're gonna fit that when the new championship is gonna start. Oh, wow. The teams are gonna be built and prepared, and they're gonna. They start already put it. five guys on him. You don't think they're preparing now? You don't think they're preparing now? I take, now, I take, I take a, 
I, I I give him a lot of credit for the goal that he scored last Sunday, last week. I mean uh, Sunday, but Saturday. I take away so much from the defender of Atalanta. I mean they look like a bunch that of. That is us. true. Yeah. I mean that is true. He, he, I, look pray, so I praise him. It's spectacular for what he did. But five or six of them to just. Those three, right? Yeah, they were actually yeah. four. Mike. I mean, everyone keeps saying eight because of the eight guys were there, no, but it was really okay. three. It was, it was like it was like three guys. Four people. Like two, three guys that were actually the only one of them. But he made them look so. He made them look so like dumb. Bro, imagine, them. imagine you're you're in Italy and you just keep seeing that play on Sky Italia all week long, <laughs> and you're the three defenders, and you're just watching that over and over again. Then he makes you go like this. Yeah, because there's, not, there's nothing you can do, but because you're gonna go look to deflect the shot, he's going in like he's gonna take it. He has a, a great body fake. His so they take the bait. They take the bait. Just like on football. Oh, by the way, talking about uh, talking about. Uh, why don't you say something about my ability to score uh, the other uh, couple of weeks ago? You remember I wasn't that? There. Oh, you. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. You keep uh, bringing that up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it was like score two many months goals, ago. Bro. Oh, you were not there. I'm why don't you ask you? your? Why don't you ask your friends? Is it on video? Hey, listen. If it's not on video, it doesn't happen. happen. Two tiragiro, two, two banana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see you play this for your friends. And I'm making that. this up. Two tiragiros. Do you? I think even if the net was open, you wouldn't hit it. And another goal, I scored with my like a back, a back foot. A back foot. You're gonna jump. What are you? The top. What are you? The dolphin at the Sea World. No. But it's a goal. No, I didn't do the bicycle. Scissor? Bicycle. What are you doing? That's what no, the did. No, the taco, a flick, I a back heel. I said a back heel. That's the first thing I said. That's the first thing I said. Nick, did I not say it? Replay it. I said a back heel first. Nick, you were there. <laughs> a back heel. Nick doesn't play soccer. But I said that first and you said no. The taco. The goalie oh went on one gosh. side and the goal went on the other side. The ball went on one side. That's a player's last goal. Did it go It did. Oh, okay. You, you went to play with the, the U6? Kids? What's, what's a U6? Under six. The U6. Oh. You went to the play U6. with six year olds? Listen to me. I, I played, think even against six year olds, it would be people tough. of your age. You should be embarrassed even to say that. I wasn't that. there. All right. Thank God for you, you were not there. When, when every time I've been there, I've never they're, seen you even go up. They're all in wheelchairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I went up? Because it was snow on the ground. <laughs> oh. and, uh, and I kept uh. falling on my butt. So I said, uh, that's on, also, the, that's <laughs> also like, on the opposite net. That was a nice patch that I was clear. <laughs> I got three balls. I buried three of them. Nice. I'm happy for you, Anto. You'll you. hear about it next week on the show. Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you even do it, Mike? What else we got? Yeah, seriously. did a backflip. Lazio tied Bologna 0-0. Zero, zero. That's good for us. I like Bologna style. I really love Bologna style. Bologna look nice. I love the press. And also, you know what's crazy about that? Is uh, Arnautovic. It was a problem with him and Thiago Motta. He's playing. the top goal scorer in your team, and he's not playing. And the guy's on the bench. And it's because he's mad that they're, you're not training. And I was, I've was i been watching a lot of Thiago Mota videos on YouTube. Like when he spoke to the U19s of PSG. Just his philosophy in general. And, you know, he has this saying where he's like, "If uh, I, want, I love possession. I love you holding the ball. But what I love is even more is when you lose the ball, you run your try to get ass it back. off to get it back right mm -hmm. away. And he does not care who, what your name is, even though you're Arnautovic and you got the most goals. He's like, if you're not running, if you're not training well, if you don't help the rest of the team and you don't do the press right, out. you're out. And that's sort of his philosophy. When it went viral about the 272, obviously there was question mark. He's reading it from le left to right. And the reason why he's doing that is because he thinks that the attacker is the first defender. And he wants that man to press and he wants everyone as a unit to follow. And mm -hmm. the goalkeeper, where he's counting as that seventh person, He's the first attacker in terms of how they're building out. And you really see the shape of them when they try to press. They suffocate teams and they're missing Orsolini. They're missing Dominguez. They get a tie against uh, Lazio. And I know Lazio's had a lot of games recently and they're missing Chido Immobile. And they probably should have gotten a backup striker, to be honest, uh, in January because that front three has to play every game. I but embrace him. I embrace his philosophy. Bologna. I do embrace him. It's spectacular. What you just said before, you're losing the ball. The first defender is your attacking staff. You lost the ball, you're gonna have to go after the ball. When I see Leao, I mean, I keep bringing Leao up. His attitude, when you lose the ball, he walks. He walks. You have to go after the ball like it's your life or death. But Depends at the on same that, time, man. at on. the same time, it doesn't work when one player is doing it. It needs to be a philosophy within the team that you move as one because 
I've seen it many times at teams where, you know, you got one striker that's running like a, a maniac, you know, with his head, uh, a chicken without his head on. He's running to the defender, and then the defender's able to pass the ball because the, the fullback is not pressing up. So I see Giroud do it. Giroud is 36 yeah, but, years But that's old. a philosophy. That comes down to the philosophy of the team, and that's why at Bologna it's working. He's had a lot of problems because he's had Zigze, who's a good player. He's a talented player from the Bayern Munich system. He plays Bado instead as a center forward in the match because of the way that he's able to press. You know, he's not really tactically um, stuck to his ways. It's very fluid. He doesn't know who's going to be his player. That could hurt you, but it could also help you. Yeah, and to be honest, when Arnautovic wasn't playing, I was like, oh, Bologna, you're going to tank. But, so it's very it's very impressive w- with what he's doing. When he was with Spezia too, he seems like that new kind of coach that you want. Like the new... like. Team, top team should be looking at someone like him to replicate him because he's the kind of coach that adapts. He doesn't just stick to his old dinosaur ways. He actually looks for the new kind of coaching ability. And this is what you want, especially with the Bologna, who the previous seasons, they were just happy to not get relegated. But a team like this is actually fighting to go in Europe, which is really amazing and refreshing to see because Bologna wasn't like that. And they also have two Greeks, so I like to watch them more. And they have uh, a, but they play well. No, they do play he's, well. He's also a former, the best players. And he's also a former player, too. And he's oh, also yeah. a former player that played in a lot of top teams. Have you seen him play? He played at Inter, Excellent of course. Player. He played at PSG. PSG yeah. He was, he was the number 10 Barcelona. for... He was the number 10 for Italy yeah. for a little bit of time. So... The, the reason why I say that is because I, I always hate just the name of a, of a coach because we've seen it a million times. Yeah. Great name, great player, doesn't transition to a coach. But a coach who has really great ideas and who has a tactically organized system, you mix that with a player who's been in locker rooms and who can handle sorts of, uh, of talents of big name players because he, he speaks to them as players. That's why I think he has the makings to try to become a big coach. And that's why I keep flirting with the idea of Inter just because he played for Inter. You say Tiago Motta going to Inter? Just an idea. That would be a good idea, actually. Out of, you, you like it? That or? could be an excellent idea. Or Are you kidding me? I want one more year with Bologna. Because with Spezia, 100%, uh, what he was able to do to replicate what Italiano did the year before. And he made that jump with, with Bologna. Um, but Bologna, I think should be a team that's a little bit higher up in the table really uh for the next no i'm saying for the next year to to continue this rate oh because he he he, uh inherited this team right Mm -hmm. so i want to see him for the second time around Around really? to, no, to keep this what's team there, where it what's is. What's that you got to lose so, by not, yeah, not giving a shot? I agree with Anto here. What's, what's there to what's lose? To Another lose? year of Inzaghi? <laughs> you know, you kidding me? Well, what are you going to embrace one more year with yeah. Inzaghi? You no, know already yeah, what no. you have on your hands. I agree. What's the, what you got to lose? You got nothing to lose over there. Actually, you have a lot more to gain. You give much it a more, shot. Much you think it's too again. risky? No, I don't it's think so. I'm asking him. You think it's too risky? Yeah, I could see the hesitation. No, yeah, I do think it's risky because I think... You need to have a proven. You need to get a winner. That's what I think. You need somebody that you don't has have won money before. for a winner. I understand, but beggars can't be choosers. Oh, who's a winner that you could afford? Your sponsor's not paying you. Get Mourinho back. Yeah, yeah. He wants money. You want who? Your ideal. You want money. Simeone? Would that be the guy? No. Simeone would be good. Too expensive to win. No, like you'll just win. But the the style of play would be like a. So who would you want? Who's the winner in your mind? That if money was not an object, obviously leave. Guardiola aside, those kind of players. Who's the one that you're thinking? Well, I say I like I like that Zerbi what he does. Okay, because I think he's done it for a while. But he's not a now. winner. Okay, not a winner, but he's done it for a while. Uh, crazy, but Klopp also is interesting. I think as a name, I think he needs a change. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Pete, change we gotta stop thing. you I'm immediately. Telling you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Can you cut <laughs> this? Piece? Klopp's just, never gonna you. go there. He, 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 he he sometime right. soon. Zidane would be nice. Oh. All right, so we're talking about fantasies. Conte. Like, seriously. If we're Conte, talking about Conte, fantasies. you would want Conte back? Conte's a realistic yeah, one. Yeah. You would take him back? Sure. You'll cut. Of course you to get rid of Inzaghi, you'll take Conte back? Yes. Wow. Every Inter fan would. What a backstab reward, man. Why is it backstab? I don't understand. He was very high on, on uh, Inzaghi. First. Okay, then, now then, you then, see, then, and you then. see, and he was not no, materializing the results. Not I got a question too. Did, did you see Lukman didn't start for Atalanta, mm. and then he put him in in like the 89th minute? It's not health. It's not no, healthy. No, he is. He's healthy. Weird. He's that was healthy. Weird. He's I healthy. saw that too. He's healthy. He just didn't score in six games prior to that 
Maybe something. Surely it had to be something in training. Why so late though? But yeah, the weird thing I is saw Aiden when it came at 2-0. I, I right. said he's a Primavera player yeah, or something. At 2-0, you put yeah, the guy I saw in. That too. Right? It was 2-0. Yeah, I'm it was sure. kind of a humiliating. Oh, it had to have been 2-0. It could yeah. have been yeah. it's, it's minute. sort of humiliating because you know you don't yeah, put a, you don't put a striker over there just to finish up and the game. And he made a sub at halftime. I think he took a, he took at Hoyland at halftime. Mm. So I thought maybe I yeah, thought Muriel you could have put Lukman because Pasalic is another one that's bothered me lately because he was so good last year. Mm. I think he had 13 goals and 7 assists last year. This year, what does he have? 2? 2-2? Two two? Everyone performed last year. This season, no one's performing. They're it's taking cool. a vacation year on. It's Atalanta, the World Atalanta, Cup. Atalanta. <laughs> <laughs> it's the World Cup. <laughs> Atalanta didn't look good. Atalanta didn't look good against no. Napoli. I didn't like the way they played at all. No. I don't like the way they played they it. Played bad. Oh, but the first half they didn't do bad actually. I saw did they the create any chance. No, no, they did. To be what honest, the until the, until the goal, they, they they kept Napoli at bay. They I give did. them, but that. did they create any? But chance? they didn't create a lot of opportunities. I don't score. remember them no. creating anything. Is my thing. But they did keep Napoli quiet. Yeah, yeah, they were countering. They were countering. This Atalanta this year has been more of a pragmatic Atalanta in the overall. Yeah, the start of the season was very defensive. Like we didn't see the high score. Then obviously with Lukman. He kind of came on fire, and then I don't know what's going on these last six uh, six games or so, and maybe there's something inside. You know, Gasparini is notorious for uh, mm. having some issues with with uh, players. players. So Zapata's done. Muriel Zapata's too. Done. Yeah, I mean, listen, Ram Muriel yeah. was scoring the regard. highest scoring to goal ratio. I think Zapata's washed. I mean, I'm watching him play, and I'm like, my gosh. It's, it's not like, healthy to it's, me. It's not healthy. I mean, he's had a lot of injuries, but, I mean, if you start, you're healthy, and he did not play well at all. Mm. It's not just him. It was rough uh, to watch. No, no but I, I say him because not he's one of the player. senior players. No, you know, you bad. look at a lot no, of the senior players. Me it's too. He's a great player. Yeah, I feel yeah, bad yeah. for him. I'm yeah, but sure. I think... Uh, I love when he was scoring every time. He was so good, man. He was one of my favorite strikers. Even even Ederson, I know he's a new young player coming in, and I think he's trying very hard. You know, he's putting his head down. You can't really tell his real position. He loses the ball on the goal, on the Fada goal uh, that they starts with. I know they weren't with Cup Miners. Who's, he's the only guy, I think. Him and Lukman and Hoyland, they have good numbers. But yeah, weird. Darun, Darun's an anchor. He's always very solid. Yeah. I like Darun there. But besides that, this uh, Atalanta team misses a little bit of magic. And Mele, I know... Mele, I like him a lot, though. I know Atal uh, Gasparini keeps saying he's like, we don't have the budgets of everyone else, which is true. But he's always said that. Well, you do yeah. see it, Lazio. Even uh, when they're in Champions League, he said the same thing. He mm. always says that. Well, he was absolutely that's right, clutch. though. That yeah, point, I know. Yeah. But that's his clutch. That team had more uh, more magic, though, within them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a question we had in the beginning of the season. Did the, is the magic lost at Atalanta? But they were getting results, like you said, being a little bit more pragmatic. Yeah. I just don't feel it within the team. Now, return yeah, to the Atalanta that we knew before. I, the they're run. right where they have no, to they're be. Still, they're and still I, really good. And I think, yes, mm -hmm. Zapata's not what he was, but this kid Hoyland is, is going to be something special. There's potential. So, like, they still have these hmm. pieces. I think Lukman, I know in the last six games, hasn't performed. But this guy, what he's done in the overall season, I think deserves recognition Praise and what he's going to be able to do. You know, we've been, the, talking, remaining. We've so been like, talking about Atalanta in this terminology right now because we are used to see Atalanta mm -hmm. just being on the top three uh, uh, all the time. And now, uh, all of a sudden, it's, uh, it looks like a subpar season for them the last couple of years. So, uh, I, I say, you know, I think the factor of uh, them not having all the kind of money that they need to make a... To make it to uh, you know to, to make them become the winning team, uh, whether it's going to be in Italy or in Europe, it's it's relatively a factor. I think it's the uh, the ownership does not want that. I think the ownership. That's not true. I spoke to the ownership. You did? Yes. I'm not sure, but so why I spoke to I spoke to Steve Pauli. Like but why is not buying the 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 the, the, you, juice, you, the juice that you need over there? You also need revenues to increase to be able yeah. to invest revenue. with with Where are you gonna financial get the fair play. From? They just do the new stadium. The stadium right. is being redone. They're on the right path. Uh, Percassi. They they've consistently made but what bought the out top those positions. Guys? Who's the new new owner? Is the Americans? They're they're uh, still they're fifty five forty five. Who's fifty five? Paliuka. Oh. Yeah, owner of the Celtics. All right, so... <laughs> they just came in. They're, it's like less than a year or just about a, year. about a year. They have good ideas, but they're not touching the sporting side. The sporting side is staying with Percassi because Percassi did an incredible job. The, he's, they're touching more of the marketing, uh, bringing money in, trying to you know bring statisticians in to be able to analyze. Maybe and stuff I think like that. if you want Atalanta to, to go to the next uh, to the next level, you need to either put somebody next to Percassi and say, this is what you needed to do. Oh, oh my god, sorry. Chink Apenny. I'm going to say, can I call you later? Right, we're going to end the podcast. Anybody else? Uh, we have any other topics? No, I'm mean, looking forward for the Champions League. You said so, we're going to have some uh, some nice talk to uh, to the Champions League. Let's hope that Inter makes it to the next round. Let's hope. You know, we are a big Napoli fan. Too. We are all yes. a big fan. Napoli too.
I mean, I mean yeah. Mike, yeah. Look oh, at his arm. Yeah. His bracelet. Excuse me? Oh, wow. Look at you, Mike. Congratulations. <laughs> now you house yourself. Congratulations. Guys. Nick, look at this. Nick. Hold on. Nick, look at this. Nick. <sighs> Black and blue. Maybe some some is that Olympiacos uh, colors no, it's too. They're red. Oh, they're red and black. Yeah, black Greece and is black and blue. No, I, I know just that. got that. They're gifts, so yeah, I put them on. Gifts from who? I think they're inter bracelet. It's an inter bracelet, Nick. Okay, so we it's have not, the Greek. It's not an inter bracelet. Okay, <laughs> the Greek is out. Guys, guys, as always, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, guys. guys. <laughs>